Seamus Ross said, crazy question, but um, wool smells terrible when it gets wet. I don't want to smell like a wet sheep or a wet dog when caught in the rain outside. Are there any advancements on the additives to wool, to a wool kilt, to help in this regard? Yes, I have poly kilts as well for those days. So they do have some <coughs> man-made fabric kilts. So I don't know why you're asking, Seamus, but um, how do it, how, I mean, I don't know how sensitive this person is, but what do you do about the wet wool smell of a kilt? So we are, we are not going to market our no, new cologne. Ode de you. I was gonna say Ode de you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It, it, is, it is creepy that we're thinking of the same it jokes is, in our heads actually. simultaneously. But E W E U. Yes. Yes. Um, the I don't think wool kilts don't have the same odor as a like an, an Irish sweater or like a, you know, a yeah. wool sweater kind of thing because it's yeah. it's treated differently. It's, it's it's finished. It's washed. It's not in the grease. It's you know it, there's a lot more treatment to the fiber and to the yarn than there would be to like a wool, the, the material that you, you know, the yarn you would knit a wool sweater mm -hmm. with. Um, so it's, I don't think it's that big of a problem. I've had a kilt in the past and I think I would guess, and this is me guessing, it is down to like the dyes used in a particular kilt. Um, there's one that I had, I think it was my either McDonald Clam Randall muted or my Cameron muted that it's, there was like a sulfury smell when it got wet. So I was at a festival and I was wet because it rained on the day and I, you know, and sweating and da 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 da. So you had a little bit of a sulfury smell and I was self conscious as all get out about it, by the way. Huh. Um, but it was the wool itself. And I don't know if it was like the sulfur in the dye that was kind of coming out in, you know, for me, body heat, warm, you know, and making the kilt smell weird. Um, hmm. But we, I basically just wet washed it once or twice, and that kind of went away. I didn't have the problem again. But it's not something that's like a regular problem that I've experienced with the dozens of wool kilts that I've had. Yeah. Have either of you? We can bring back in for this too. Have either of you had any smelling issues aside from your lack of hygiene? <laughs> I mean, when Thanks. we iron them, when we're iron, when we're working on them, when we iron them, you can definitely. Smell certain, yeah. with certain dyes. Yes. Yeah. Um, Muted more than most. Yes. So we noticed that there. I mean, we were at hmm, a Celtic uh, fling and during a torrential downpour, and Lucas was like he worked on a on a frigate when he came back in from the tent. He was drowned in water. Um, but I almost I'd, I'd and I'd be curious to this if it's per mill. Like if certain mills, hmm. in in maybe it might be the content of their mixture and their wool they use, possibly, or even the dye, the secondly the dyes they use. If some mills, like if some mills are a little bit more smellier than others when when it gets wet, I haven't really I haven't really noticed anything with with mine when they've gotten wet. But I'm usually not out dancing in the rain when it's. <laughs> so, but I'd be I'd, have, I'd be curious about the taking a sample of a little little sample of each and what about um yeah I I to to the backtrack I can't say I've really noticed it much um I definitely noticed that effect more with like you know period clothing you know cloaks and and mantles and tunics and stuff that are a much coarser um uh, fabric. I okay. notice it, but with my kilts, not so much. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I also am not really bothered by. It. I'm not that sensitive to the the wet dog smell. Well, plus, if but, we're at a festival or something, and there's multiple people that are kilted, multiple people that it could be soaking wet. Yeah, I mean, it, I you just it's, point to the other guy. Yeah. <laughs> but if you're all smelling the same thing, it's it. You yeah. kind of become you come nose blind. Yep. Um, yeah. Yep. So, so what about what about it? I mean. Have you guys, having worked with the fabrics, can, could you point to a mill that would be a better bet for somebody if they're worried about this? Like, you know, oh wow, you should definitely just get House of Edgar cloth for your kilter. No, don't don't do that one. I think it has more to do with if, the dyes that are used with for... 
with muted specifically mm-hmm. really? because it's it's the it's the yellowish green it's the yellow in the green it's yeah. it smells sulfury well um, sulfur and yellow dye yeah that makes that's sense that's understood and that's kind of where i'm going with it that's where i think that's that's probably the only time that i've ever i mean when, noticed a trend when, when kelly was in every day when she was in in the production room every day like we she would always point out like oh this one smells like popcorn this one smells like she would but she'd point out different things. That yeah, she was she definitely get creative a lot, with her smells. But she was definitely a lot more sensitive to that than mm-hmm. than what we were yeah. like. Oh, sure, yeah. <laughs> like, so, eh. yeah. And and it's for the record, this is a mountain out of a molehill. This is not something that the average person has to worry about smelling like they just you know exited <laughs> Hades across the river. And this is not that strong of a sulfur thing. It's you smell it when it is when you are having iron and steam and you're yeah. pushing yeah. hot air and hot steam through a fabric. Right. You can smell it a little bit, but it's not something like walking around. You're going to stink and people are going to be like, what the hell did you? No, it's not that. <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's OK. Um, but it's you, you would notice it at particular times. And it's I. the only thing, Mac, do you have any other tr- not trends, but any any, I guess, trends that you that you would notice it? By the smell is it just muted or and I'm not trying to lead the witness here. Too yeah, much. Uh, I, so I was tr- I was trying to think as, as you were talking like if I noticed any other particular ones, not that I can point out, but yeah, I, I nothing like rings a bell. Like we know when you notice it, you notice it. Yeah. So it's I'm not I'll have to I'll have to keep a. A tally in the back of my head. Keep your nose out for it. Yeah, when yes. uh, <laughs> as we're doing stuff now, um, to see if it's if it's particular dye, like a dye lot type thing, or if there's more, like you said, more yellows, more reds, more, you know, something that would would mm-hmm. need. Mm-hmm. Um, well, you know, historically speaking, <laughs> do I do it? Eric's going to come up with a bullshit story, so everybody <laughs> buckle up. Get your hip waders, because it's going to get deep. <laughs> there are two instances historically where this became a factor. Number one was with hunting or deer stalking. Essentially, you would always approach from, you know, downwind of the animal. That's normal common sense. But it was even more of a concern with Highlanders hunting the deer in the Highlands. So one of the things they would do is the night before hunt, they would smoke all the kilts over the fire, so that basically they're getting rid of the wool smell and instead of giving it more of a, a wood smoke smell. And that essentially, apparently, was enough of a, uh, a, a distract and a, a, a cover-up so they didn't have to worry about the, the deer picking up on the odor. That's also the main reason why the Highlanders would drop their kilts before they went into battle doing a Highland charge, because the odor coming off the kilts would warn the enemy, like, miles away. So you get rid of the kilt before you go charging in the battle. There's this, you know... Oddly enough, it's also the impetus for the song Chestnuts roping, Roasting on an Open Fire. Yeah. Because the Highlanders would yeah. actually stand over the fire yeah. in their kilt, yeah. roasting their nuts. Yeah. Yeah, to get rid of to, to get rid of that wool smell. Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. This is true. all true. It's true. Absolutely. Listen to us 100%. <laughs> all right, enough of that. Was that Mac or was that you? Uh, that was mine. Okay. Mr. Mac, I hope no one else believes that. I get all the smelly questions. Or just, just bring a flock of sheep and... Nah. All yeah. where you go. Yeah. Yeah. So you're good. Yep. Yeah. We have the giant battle sheep, and you cling mm. underneath like <laughs> like Odysseus. You know, cling to the bottom of the sheep. No, you got to spray paint the sheep or, or dye the sheep. No, you have a big. They're already on. tartan. They're Highland sheep. <laughs> they're already tartan colors, Mac. You have a big wooden sheep, and you roll it to the Highland <laughs> Festival, and you all climb inside. That's, you leave it outside the gates as a gift. Okay. And there's uh, Adams over here like there's some artwork oh, for no, somebody they're gonna to do. Gonna I'm going to all this, this up. <laughs> yes. Yes, you are. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hey, guys. Remember, these questions kind of go into the weeds a bit from time to time. This is a mountain out of a molehill type question, and it really isn't something that affects 99.9% of the people. If you do have a question, though, about how to care for a kilt, please check out our kilt care videos. And remember, if you like the content, Please subscribe to our channel so you are made aware when we come out with new videos.